Mm-hmm. All right. I think we're going in on this. All right. So my name is William Gross. Um, I'm doing my achievement theory, um, my project on achievement theory. Um, it's just a topic we learned about in the book. So why achievement theory? Um, I thought it was something cool that I could learn about. Um, I can incorporate in my daily life, um, be able to teach it to my students in the future, um, help teammates understand it so that you know, kind of explained it to, to my teammates being on the track and field team here at SOU um, so they can experience the success of achievement theory. But yeah, so in um, my first article um, is psychological safety of learning environment in sports schools as a factor of achievement motivation development in young athletes. So they kind of like looked out, looked at like the school, like how safe and like it is for the students in order to be, have them like achieve the motivation and development, what, you know, what they need in their life. So uh, the level of the safety of the school environment promotes like the help, the like good safety help promotes motivation and success for the student athletes. Um, here's just a quote I came, I brought from the article, a level of social and psychological safety providing the influence of social and psychological safety is the learning in of the learning environment in sports school on manifestations of motivation for achievement of individual success and oriented towards the interests of the team um, and collective have been found. So pretty much just explaining um, saying that the safety of the environment where the students are, um, they're more able to, they're able to be successful um, in competing and being motivated in school and also being a student athlete um, on that. My next article, uh, motivation of sporting achievements in youth soccer players, they kind of looked at um, the achievement motivation in soccer players under the age of 17. Um, they, oh, they had like, they looked at the, they put the different soccer players in different, um, you know, positions as goalie, you know, striker, stuff like that, defender. Um, and then they used this at Will's sport achievement motivation scale to determine like the results. Um, you kind of, there's a snag bit of it down below. They kind of asked like, you know, the the student soccer players, the athletes, um, these questions and then kind of like rated them. And then they found out that there was a high motivation for sporting achievement among all the soccer players and the different positions really didn't matter so that they were all motivated and willing to, have, you know, be successful. So my third article, um, I looked at a study of achievement motivation among different levels of female athletes. So it was a group, it was a small sample group of female athletes. Um, they took from a district level to a state level and a university level. Um, they used the sport achievement motivation test questionnaire um, to determine achievement motivation on that. Uh, they kind of, you know, they like, compared the different, the district, the state, and the university level between all the female athletes. And then kind of the result that they, that they found that there is no significant difference between district level, university level, state level, and the female athletes. So that was just kind of interesting to see on that. Um, so kind of like achievement goal theory in our book, it states that there's like three factors um, interact to determine the person's motivation, which is kind of interesting to like learn about. Achievement goals, uh, perceived like ability and the achieve and achievement behavior. And uh, it's just kind of like that they all three kind of work together to um, accomplish like their student athletes like motivation and their built their like desire to compete and achieve greatness, I guess you could say. So um, the two, these two kind of like go to go together, achievement goals and perceived ability. Um, they all kind of, uh, with my next slide, I took a smidge from the book here um, that achievement goals and perceived ability like go together to um, accomplish like a 
achievement behavior on that. And then that goes, achievement behavior goes up into the motivation on that. And like that determines how like, motivated the student athlete is. Um, so practical application, like with that, um, I would definitely, you know, incorporate it in my like daily life on that, especially being a student athlete. Um, I want all, you know, I want to do all those things in order to promote, you know, increase my motivation and drive to be successful as a student athlete. So that would be one way. Another way is that I want to be a future coach and this could be a way what I could practice sports psychology with my, you know, student athletes and like explain this whole uh, routine and kind of just have them try to do it on a daily life to increase their motivation being a student and also being a student athlete. So that would be another way being a future coach. Oh, this is just a picture of me in high school. Uh, I think we ended up winning like first or something in a track meet, but it was just wanted to, yeah, incorporate that. Um, next, you could do like your daily life, you know, like you can, you know, improve your motivation and just achievement theory in that and kind of incorporate it in your daily life so you can be successful, like more successful on that. Um, you can even do it like on the picture on the right, there's my two brothers, you know, Jacob and Caitlin, but we just did a hike. Like you could do that in your daily uh, daily life for like a hike, like, okay, this, I'm gonna set these goals and like get these accomplished in order to make myself more motivated to be successful on that. Um, and that is about it. Here's my citations, my three articles, and then I cited the book down below. And that is it. Alrighty. Well, thank you. And